Hello and welcome to a Collegiate StarCraft League match between uh, University of Utah and University of New Mexico. I am Menasaur, a Zerg player from Albuquerque, New Mexico, casting these replays from week, I think it's number four of the CSL season. And in the match one we have in that bottom right hand corner, that Teal Protoss player's name is Magnet. Oh look at that, it's got that there team team thing. Oh, but Pysanthemos has. I don't even know what that is. In the top left-hand corner, we have that purple protest. His name is Pysanthemos, representing University of New Mexico. Uh, Pysanthemos' play is definitely more cheesy play, more all-in related. And this is a PvP, so he might be doing a three-gate. I don't necessarily know what I have to see. I've seen him do in Landfest reboot in Albuquerque against Solar JTO, another Protoss player, he did a DT opening and mostly just three gate warp gate play. All I know in PvP is you're definitely going to see Stalkers and Immortals because that's how that is. Unless it gets to late game, which rarely happens, but it happens more often than it, than not with me doing PvPs. So we'll see how long this game is going to go. And this is cast from replay. We see, so we do have um, our university, uh, university of Utah player. Look around for any proxies, anything of the sort. We're not seeing the same with Pesanthemos. Uh, Pesanthemos going two early gases and two gases coming in from our other Protoss player, and they're a bit later. So we'll see what tech comes faster for Pesanthemos. You probably definitely want to get his cyber core as soon as he can and get his uh, warp gate researching and then figure out um, around the time after his third pylon what tech he decides to go in order to expand he could do a DT expand which is very popular in PvP or just basically get a way for him to get detection so he can safely expand and be able to scout his opponent it's basically in PvP you want to get that edge so you're able to expand and then flaunt it I don't even know what that is do you guys know what that is? is it a pony? It's a hand. And like a fish? Or a turnip? I don't know. It looks cool though. Looks really cool. In Utah! Starcraft 2! So funny. Our University of Utah player looking at Pisanthemos' uh, base, seeing another gateway coming down. Very standard in PvP. Gonna definitely get another gate in there. And. Is he going to put a pylon there? No. There's no... There's, I mean, there's one probe. His probe's up here. Let's see if it puts down a pylon. If and when it puts down a pylon. Twilight Council coming down from uh, University of Utah player Mothership Core out. And what is Pysanthemos going to do? He has a lot of gas right now. What's he going to do with his gas? What are you going to do with your gas, Pysanthemos? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, being such a tease. So this is either going to be Blink Stalker or DTs. It looks like it might be either. Oh, gas was spent on what? A Stargate. Just saying, going to go for uh, Stargate opening, probably for Oracles. Oracle or Void Ray, depending on what he wants to do. Don't think he's going to go Phoenix. I'm not sure why he would go Phoenix. He definitely wants to get detection. Oh, and that Dark Shrine did come down from our University of Utah player. Um, Pesanthe was in a really good spot. He'll be able to um, use Revelation with the Oracle and be able to see those DTs if needed. Proxy Pylon hasn't come down yet. Oh, yeah, it came down over here. And we are seeing the same thing. But no, um, Pesanthemos is bringing in Stalkers. He's going to do... Oh, he's going to do a three-gate timing. Three-gate timing with... With an oracle. But little does he know, this isn't... Uh, what's happening right now? Oh, the god, this is sort of sad. We'll see what happens. And dropping right in the natural. We do have a warp in that will be warded off unless, of course, this... Um, where is that? Santa is moving into the main, going to start taking out stuff. Warp gate is finished. That DT shrine is done. Uh, faded out a, a photon overcharge. He needs to get out of there right now. Needs to get out. Needs to get out. Loses one stalker. May lose a zealot. 
Oh, and the DTs are in the main at the moment. Where is that over? Where is that? Oh, yeah, Revelation coming down. And Pasanthamos is in a good spot at the moment. He, I don't think he can really push this too much further over here on the offensive, but he should be able to expand. This is some thwarted uh, tech right now. I mean, honestly, with, when you go DT, you want to be able to expand behind it, and he's going to try... No. Is that a... What is that? Another pylon? Are you going to get out another oracle? Is he going to get another oracle? Where's the other oracle? There's only one. Pisanthamos warping, warping things in another oracle in production. That will actually be really good for Pisanthamos. He will be able to use Revelation once again away f uh, with him. And sending back two drones, or two probes, excuse me. Not enough for a photon overcharge, but very soon he will be able to. One DT just chilling out here in the front within an earshot. Moving forward. Activate Revelation, destroy it, and we'll be able to cancel this. Well, he does have an Immortal out, so an Immortal is... Uh, I mean, it's not necessarily great. I mean, he needs a lot more units right now. Magnet does, however. Let's see if he'll be able to do this. Oh, but the Force Fields are actually really good. The second Immortal's out? This is actually kind of bad for Xanthamos. And the Zealots are going to be able to tank the shots from the from the Stalkers and just be able to kill the Stalkers. Yes! The Xanthamos is getting cleaned up, losing the first Oracle. We'll probably lose the next one. And that's not good for Xanthamos. Oh, losing it, not having any sort of detection at the moment. We will see ETs be uh, warped in in just a moment. Man, Pisanthamos having sort of a command right now could have just kept him inside. Kept him inside his base. Could have took his own base, and now we have... Oh, but it's okay. Pisanthamos will see this. Another DT warp in. But Pisanthamos might see it, but does he have another Oracle? He doesn't. He lost both of them. I have to say this is... Santhamos in such a bad place at the moment. Will not be able to stop that. Oh no, he does have an oracle out. Never mind. There's a third oracle out. Everything's cool. Activating revelation. Gonna be able to just take it down. Oh, but letting it get away? Don't let it get away. Don't let it take your heart away. Both players gonna expand right now, move into a mid-game. Will he get supply block over this? Yeah, no. Just about. Both expands coming down. Santhamo. Both are. Let's see, units lost. Uh, pretty even. I mean, Santhamo's lost more uh, attacking units, m m more army units. We'll see if he'll be able to get out of this. He is going Void Ray. And we do have Immortals coming out for from our friend, Magnet. Oh, we have another DT here harassing this natural, and it will just get picked up. And that's a lot of gas lost right there. If he's letting it get away, oh my gosh, letting it get away. Santhamos keep me keeps making void rays. We do have more immortals being made by Magnet. Will he decide to do a move out? He's gonna hallucinate a Phoenix for scouting purposes. So off this three gate is just going to be a void ray gateway all in. Most likely, that's Pisan that's Pisanthamos' style for sure. And that Phoenix is gonna see just about everything in the base. No real tech past that, and he will see. A void ray being warped in and through this warp gate. And what will be his response? Forge coming down. Double forge to get double upgrades. And already has a. Wow! It's gonna get high Templar rather quickly. To get Archons? Yep. Just going straight with the Archons. Hmm. Worker lead for Magnet. Army lead very close to each other. 
However, I think Pisanthamos' army is a bit stronger. Because he has a lot of air units. Another Phoenix coming up. We'll reveal the same thing. Maybe Magnet will want to do a uh, plus one, plus one, t or plus one, plus one timing with this army. If he feels confident that he will be able to kill a Void Rays. Santa must just make more units, making more units, gonna throw them all into the meat grinder here soon. Taking his third and fourth gas though. Indicates more tech uh, expand. And is that what he's doing over here? Yes. Pisanthemus taking a third. However, not able to take a third because of that retarded little DT right there. Good job from Magnet. This is the part of PvP where I don't say much. Because I can't necessarily tell what's happening. Other than uh, force fields getting researched for the Archons. But we have Pisanthos moving out at the center of the field of Be uh, Belcher Vistage. And Magnet definitely knows it's happening. What will we see? Oh, so two more Archons coming in. We'll be done by the time these Void Rays get up there. As long as they're not clumped up, I think he'll be alright in using the Photon over... Or using prismatic alignment in order to cause a lot of hurt. Another warp in of stalkers. Don't necessarily like that with these mortals. But now moving back. Pisanthemus moving back. Just postured forward. Just move back. But now moving... Oh, he had to take care of the DT that was in his, his base. A whole position DT, hoping to get lucky. Pisanthemos moving down to the third area. Gonna make it offensive. Wow, it's just gonna chill out right there. Oh, but they one shot. How many kills does that DT have? 11, wow. Pisanthemos moving in, putting on Guardian Shield. Gonna move into this Archon Immortal Army. There's a lot of stuff here in our... Our Protoss player is moving back, beating out a Photon Overcharge right now. Oh gosh, that DT, is he not going to take care of it? Oh no, Pisanthemos. This DT is going to get this natural expansion. This DT is going to get it. I cannot believe this. The DT is getting this expansion. Oh. Oh, man. And now he's just going to... Whatever. So here's the engage. Pisanthemos moving in. Not having as good a concave as our other Protoss brother. And oh. And no, the upgrades are just definitely working in uh, Magnet's favor. And Pisanthemos has just been decimated. That is GG, and uh, University of Utah takes this game number one. And now it's time for game number two on Yensu. University of Utah versus University of New Mexico. We have a PvP, another PvP. Oh my gosh, in the bottom left-hand corner representing the University of New Mexico, we have Trumpet, a.k.a. the MVP of UNMCSL. And in the top right-hand corner, we have the um, Protoss player representing University of Utah. His name is Vita. A little bit of problems with another PvP. We're going to see Stalkers and Immortals. <laughs> We're going to see it. It's going to be weird. Um, Trumpet loves the DT expand. He is a pro at it. He's done it multiple times where I've watched him play. So we'll actually see if he decides to do it in this game. We're probably going to see identical openings, identical gas timings. Definitely want to get the double gas rolling quickly. Wants to get that warp gate and get out a few stalkers. And then figure out what tech you want to go to by the third pylon. If it's going to be Blink Stalker or DT, or if it's Stargate or a Robo. It just necessarily depends. The safest 
It's probably, excuse me. It's probably Robo and Stargate. Those are the safest. You'll have forms of protection against DTs. And honestly, if DTs are caught, that is a huge investment loss if it doesn't do any damage. It does give the other player a kind of bit of map control, but as long as you have detection, you'll be able to expand freely and maintain. Basically identical timings from both players. PvP. Lots of points of not talking. Second guess coming down from our University of Utah friend. And will we see that Cybercore is down? So yeah, I ate lots of peanut butter and jelly crackers today. Tons of them. Lots of them. And I had a party pizza today too. And I ate the rest of the chicken in red chili sauce. A New Mexico favorite. This probe probably loves red chili and that's why it needs to see the red protoss. To maybe see if the red protoss has some red chili from Debarro. Gonna see where that third pylon is? Maybe? Let me see. Get the, there's a second one? Oh, we're uh, chrono boosting out that, that stalker. Both players doing the same thing. Getting that warp gate. Mothership core out. For Vita very quickly. But what's the tech? Alright, we do see Twilight Council coming down. From Vita. We see Twilight come down from Mothership Core moving across the map. This is a little bit of a harass. Zealot, Stalker, and Mothership Core coming from Vita. I don't think... Uh, we'll see what happens. If, if he's not careful, if Trumpet's not careful, he might lose it. Oh gosh, Aki needs to get back. He doesn't have enough for a recall. How much till a recall? Oh, 100. He's just got to run back. Zealot coming out to try to help out, but really this is a sort of bad turn of events for our friend Trumpet. He needs to get that, yep, the Mothership Core on the high ground. Hopefully it does not get sniped. Other, uh, Mothership Core from Vita coming into the main of Trumpet. Going to be able to do a little bit of harass in the back. <laughs> he needs to choose what he wants to do, back or front. Oh no, pulling away. All pulling away. Uh, probe chilling out over here by the optional third location in order to put down a, pro, uh, a proxy pylon. And do we see... We do see Blink being researched by our buddy Vita. And dropping two more gates. We are going to see a Blink Stalker. Blink Stalker timing. And we are seeing from Trumpet a Robo, which is actually a counter for it. You need Immortals. Immortals are great against... Cent or are great against Stalkers. When does he feel that he can expand? Well, I guess Vita's going to go ahead and expand right now because he's going to be aggressive in a few minutes. And how much longer till it's done? But uh, weird. He's getting it now, but he's not making a timing out of it. He's actually going to get his... ...it first and then warp in over here. That's pretty good. We are seeing, oh, a mortal out first, not observer first. Trumpet was pretty confident that it wouldn't be DTs or something that needed detection. So Vita's moving some stalkers out on the map. Probably take the towers, see what's up. Trumpet's probe is moving out to see that this probe probably has the tower, and he's going to go put on a proxy pylon. Three stalkers going to poke up, see what's going on. There isn't a mortal here, so they're going to have to run straight home after this little engagement. That probe is taken down, doesn't get any scouting information. And Trumpet's falling a bit behind right now. I mean, they're they're, uh, I mean, they're basically even right now. No, our, our Red Protoss player has been making probes the entire time. 
He has 34, 34 to 26. And he has that natural expansion. So I'm not sure what Trumpet's waiting for at this moment. Now Trumpet's decided to move out to take his natural expansion. Which is late compared to our other Protoss player. Man, why do I always get PvPs that go really long? Why can't I have those ones that only last like 10 minutes? Only last 10 minutes. And it's really crazy, and I barely understand how each one of them is winning, and it's all micro. That's what I want to see. Yes. Lucinated Phoenix. Not going to really see that much. See that he's supply blocked. That's about it, because the War Prism is trying to come out. Will he decide to move forward? He's getting um, upgrades now, or working to get upgrades. Vita, from University of Utah. Or is it U.S. Salt? University College Salt Lake. UCSL. Utah CSL. Now I get it. Now we're good at guards. <laughs> Another hallucinated phoenix and a, a pesky p uh, probe coming around to put down a pylon in the back of the p uh, possible third location to Trumpet. Trumpet just getting his economy up, but really our red Protoss player is zooming ahead with 48 probes to 34 and more army supply. Sort of an interesting position at the moment. Both of them having the same composition, but our red Protoss player having more. Oh, we're seeing a bunch more gates come down from our red Protoss player. So he'll be doing eight gates. Eight gate immortal. Timing, yes? Howard's guess is over here. Yeah, he has them. And he's keeping his money down, so it's not he's not getting ready to expand. He's going to just turn out a few more units and then go. From what it looks like, at least. does have that pylon coming in. Trumpet just being really passive. He's normally really passive. He's finally not supply blocked anymore. He has that... Oh, where is it? Oh, no. Red Protoss player Vita's moving upon the map. He wants to put some hurt on Trumpet, and I think he'll be able to. He definitely is ahead in army supply at the moment, 66 to 55. And he's coming to the possible third location, getting up his proxy pylon, going to be able to reinforce fairly easy. He has three immortals, uh, a bunch of sentries, and it's kind of... Nah, it looks like Red has a little bit more. We do have a hallucinated Phoenix. Oh, Trumpet. I mean, a hallucinated Colossus. We'll see if he's going to want to attack into or if he'll scare him just enough to stay away. We do have that fourth Immortal out. Oh, he was not able to get his proxy pylon due to his Zealot run by. And here's the standoff. Who's going to get their third first? Oh, Trumpet sort of having kind of concave. No, no, just... No! The force fields are good, keeping the immortals out of shooting distance, killing all the zealots. Oh, this. These archons are getting chewed right up, and honestly, this is just a really good engage for our uh, University of Utah Protoss player, Vita. And Trumpet is decimated, and we will see the GG from Trumpet in just a short minute. There's no way that he can remacro out of that, and GG. And we are on game point right now as we go into the 2v2 match between University of New Mexico and the University of Utah Collegiate StarCraft Leagues. And this will be on Isle of Slaughter, which is kind of an interesting map. It's in an S shape with destructible rocks. And on the top left-hand area of the map, we have the University of New Mexico CSL team, uh, Dr. Ted and Cat Whale. Two people have been playing with each other for quite a minute now, um, over the past five weeks or four and a half weeks of CSL. 
And in the bottom left hand corner we have Ender DXG and Akasha Born. Uh, yeah. So cool. So they're going to be going after each other and complete and utter dominance. Oh, look, it's a little cute. Certainly, I have that as my portrait. It's cute. Does he have one too? Where's his? You're on the same team as him, right? DXG? No, not on the same team. Whatever. Oh, it's down. So it's really hard for me to do 2v2, so let's go ahead and jump right into the bird's eye view. Uh, I think it's going to be 4-gate Ling. That's the best thing to do is just something early. But with this map, it gives you the opportunity to expand because it's hard to reinforce going, because you have to go all the way around to get up in there. All the way around. We are seeing a um, hatch first. Whoa, was that a 10 hatch? That's, that's interesting. Protoss play on the opposing team does 10 hatch. We do have a four-team pool coming from Dr. Ted. Getting ready for any kind of cheese. Rack's opening with the gas timing indicates it probably wants to do a Reaper. So we'll definitely see that Reaper come out and he will spot what's happening. Oh, quick double gas. Not exactly 4-gate, but maybe 4-gate with more gas-heavy units. Dr. Ted is taking that natural expansion right now. And where's everyone at? Eleven, thirteen, no gas. What are you making? Reaper gonna come out, gonna look around, gonna be good. For a Protoss player, we are seeing um, gate cyber opening. Gonna get that gateway, gate, uh, gonna get those gates up, gonna get that warp then maybe take an expand or maybe just put on some pressure. But again, it's really hard to do it on this map. And in 2v2, compositions have to be um, fairly the strongest they can be at the certain time. It has to be very quick. It has to be very quick because if it's, if it's seen coming, a Zerg can make units fairly quickly, or at least by the time that gets there, and bunkers could get finished. Well, let's one and mothership cores out, which is totally gonna stop this. And is the queen out? It will be now. Nah. And that reaper's just gonna see that what he needed to see. There's some chrono. Is it gonna go into the warp gate? Or not go in the warp gate? Who knows? More marines being made. Tech lab coming down. Factory coming down in the back. Marine Mine, most likely, or Marine Hellion, depending on what he is, he exactly would like to do. And 14, 10, 15. So it looks like Cat Whale, and Cat Whale is expanding right now. You and I'm feeling that they can expand, they can. Uh, do their thing. We are seeing a quick third. Quick third from our Zerg player from the University of Utah. And right now... Oh, is he just taking towers right now? Yeah, he's just getting some map control. University of New Mexico has to take this match and the next match to get to the ace match in order to win this match. Will they be able to do it? That is the question. Another CC coming down. Stim being researched. Doesn't look like it's a particular time. It looks like the Zerg is just doing his thing and the Terran's doing his thing. Just keep on keeping on. No real timings as of yet. Both play all all players seeming to want to go for a more economic game. Dr. Ted seeing that that expands not taken. The other one's taken. And we'll see bio. We'll definitely see bio. And we'll see that tech lab training. But she can definitely assume that it is STEM.
Dr. Ted's going up to Lair now and getting the rest of his gases. Reaper confirms it. Whoa, Dr. Ted has a lot of money right now. A lot of money. Others are clear. Macarine fairly well. Getting his... Now starting for Mega Ling production from what it looks like. Getting speed. Maybe might want to do a timing with these Marines. Like a drop of sorts. Or he could just protect his third. Is he droning at all? Doesn't look like it. Spires down for Dr. Ted, as well as getting bangling speed. Gonna try to go neck and neck with this with this Zerg in the same build. Terran's taking out the front rocks, feeling confident. Wants to start getting forward and getting map control because definitely a lot more lings on the map from our blue Zerg player for Utah as opposed to New Mexico. Great overlord placement right here. Five bases to four right now with, with our Utah friends being definitely in a commanding position. And they're going to be working off of those rocks right now. Protoss, Catwheel not reacting, not coming up and, and trying to defend this front. Or maybe and getting caught off guard, being eaten up by Lings. This is absolutely a nightmare for UNM right now. In 2v2s, you want to keep your armies together so they don't get lost. And, oh... Terran force coming right in while well, the Protoss force and the Zerg force aren't together and we'll be able to get off this bio. Will he be able to surround? Oh, and the split is actually really good while he's running away. Not taking too much damage from those banglings, but taking enough to be weeded out and Zerg is remaculating? What's he, What's he getting? More lings. More links. However, uh, our Terran player hasn't been macroing basically at all. There's nothing out right now. How much money does he have? 555. Oh, but he, there's a drop in the main of Cat Whale. Will he be able to clean it up? It looks like he will be able to. With yep. Oh wow. Love that. So again, five bases against. Whoa, another kind of drop. Oh, this sucks. They just never die. But Mutas are out right now, which will be able to clean this up quite easily. And more Zerglings coming across the map into the natural of the U of UNM. No, moving back. Knowing that he has to come back and probably defend. Does he himself have Mutas? No, but he's getting Roaches? No, there's a Spire coming down, but getting Roach speed. That's kind of odd, getting both of those things. Forge coming down from Catwhale. And also, Utah's denying this fifth base. Oh, and losing Mutas. Don't want to use them, lose them Mutas. And we have 20 in production from our blue, our blue Utah player. And so, how many does he have? Only 10, so that's like double. And Zerg trying to do some runbys here. Not really getting much done. But they're about to get together, and that's 20 mutas. That's a scary amount of mutas. That's the scary number. And how are these marines? Plus one. No upgrades from UNM. And they want to take out this fifth base, however... Oh, wow! Vinny, I mean, Dr. Ted finding a way in. Gonna try to take out this. Oh, but what's happening at his base? Oh, the same thing's happening at his base, though. As long as he doesn't lose his spire, but he will get this spire, but will they get his spire is the question. And it looks like they will be able to get his spire, or just kill most of his drones. All of his drones, actually, which is. Oh, bad. And that. Oh. I can't even tell who's kind of ahead now. And now, Dr. Ted will be able to take out this natural, which will be awesome. 
Cat Wheel, just getting rid of these mutas, but mutas for a Protoss are an absolute nightmare. It's hard to get all the way over the map, all the way on other sides of bases to be able to stop that. And it looks like Vinny lost all of his mutas. Oh, Dr. Ted, you lost all your mutas. That sucks. Upgrade's getting done for Cat Whale. And Dr. Ted is getting back up his Spire. We are seeing a Bangling Nest come down from our blue Zerg player, our blue Utah Zerg player. Oh, wow. Uh, we having the Mutas come into the natural of Cat Whale, and Cat Whale's moving forward to try to get rid of this bio, but it was just kind of a diversion. He needs to go back and save his Mineral Line. Oh, this isn't good, and he's going up to his main and this is going to be he's going to be able to kill this archon with no worries and they just feel they have to go right now because they're not going to be able to stop those mutas they're just going to get further and further behind in general protoss and zerg on creep moving up maybe should have waited for those banglings to be able to kill them quicker but there's no oh and the storms are good however i think killed some of his stuff too now, Terran will be able to clean this up nicely from what it looks like. Two sides coming in from the back and be able to take out the rest of these high Templar. And this is basically GG. And we do have the GG from Catwell. And they have left the game. And that is all from this Division 1 University of New Mexico CSL versus University of Utah CSL. This was 1-3-0 by Utah. Thank you, University of New Mexico and University of Utah and Collegiate StarCraft.